Speaking at the occasion, the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister underlined that those challenges in the nation-state building process are becoming the source of conflict. Therefore, he added, in order to sustain the peace process that has been undertaken, policy-oriented transitional justice should be established. According to Demeka, it also requires careful work at the country where human rights are protected. He underscored that. Transitional justice policy is therefore imperative to consolidate democracy and ensure sustainable peace in the country. Demek finally called on every citizen to take responsibility and contribute to the nature of lasting peace and justice in Ethiopia. Speaker of the House of People's Representatives, Tagese Chafo, for his part, said that advocating inclusive policy directions that are designed in agreement with the objective realities of the country with a view to ensuring accountability for human rights abuses committed in Ethiopia. According to him, transitional justice system is crucial to ensure accountability for acts of serious human rights abuses in a community that had gone through difficult circumstances. The speaker underlined that, particularly, transitional justice system is one of the key options to ensure sustainable peace and reconciliation as it plays important role to heal the previous wounds, bring social, economic and political advancements. He indicated that several countries have used transitional justice system to address their challenges. The speaker stressed the need to advocate inclusive policy directions that are designed in agreement with the objective realities of the country with a view to ensuring accountability for human rights abuses committed in Ethiopia. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Damag Amakounen said the historic Pakistani business delegation's visit to Ethiopia to explore investment opportunities in the country is crucial to strengthen the bilateral relations between the two countries. Ethiopian Investment Commission has organized a welcoming event to the Pakistani Investment and Trade Delegation comprised of 71 business personalities. On the occasion, Demeka said the delegation's historic visit to Ethiopia is very important to strengthen the bilateral relations of the two countries and attract investors to Ethiopia. This high-level visit is really another important step to uh, strengthen our bilateral relations. Pointing out that Ethiopia's national and economic plans focus includes agriculture, manufacturing, mining and tourism, technology and innovation in the social sector. Demeka urged the delegation to visit various sectors and actors in the country in order to create business connection. He stressed that it is very historic time to uplift our bilateral relations and to open up all Pakistani investors and company owners to invest here in Ethiopia. Ethiopakistan relations have been strengthened in the past few years in different sectors including political, economic, trade and investment. Pakistan ambassador to Ethiopia Shazab Abbas on his part said the relations between Ethiopia and Pakistan have been improving. When I came, stood at about $30 million bilaterally. And now, alhamdulillah, in two and a half years time frame, it has rose up to 75. Abbas stated that he has been working hard to accelerate the existing level of economic relations between the two countries and Kenyans direct Addis Ababa Karachi flighters and also to push Ethiopia to open diplomatic mission in Pakistan and it was successful in all. Ethiopian Airlines will begin its Addis Ababa Karachi direct flight on May 2nd, 2023, the ambassador disclosed. He also stated that Ethiopia's investment potential is for Pakistani investors in different sectors and urged the members of the delegation to explore the opportunities. The ambassador mainly pointed out agriculture, energy and mining sectors in Ethiopia as great investment potentials for Pakistani investors taking into consideration the experiences of his country. Members of the visiting delegation are engaged in agriculture, manufacturing, pharmaceutical minerals, technology, healthcare and others. The delegation is expected to visit investment projects and exchange views with pertinent government officials and members of the Ethiopian business community in the course of their five days visit in Ethiopia from March 5 to 10, 2023. 
Foreign Affairs State Minister Ambassador Miskanu Arega held talks with State Minister for Foreign Affairs of the State of Qatar, Sultan bin Saad al makir The two officials had the discussion on the sidelines of the 5th United Nations Conference on the Least Developed Countries Summit being held in Doha. During the discussion, the two sides exchanged views on regional issues of common interest. Recalling that the five days least developed countries conference kicked off on Sunday in Doha in the presence of Ethiopia's prime minister and other leaders of several countries. The objective of the conference is to mobilize international communities' commitments toward the implementation of the Doha program action for the least developed countries 2022 up to 2031 adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in April 2022. Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim Ibn Ahmed Al Tahin announced a 60 million US dollar financial contribution to Doha program of action during his keynote opening address at the least developed countries. We are in a dilemma. How should this generation in the coming ones should understand and <laughs> interpret the history of Hadwa in their lives? Making history, having history, requires the capacity to work with others. The question is, what made the Battle of Hadwa so unique, exceptional? Menelik was truly kind and generous. How do you assess the leadership of that day in terms of managing that uh, huge crisis? Even his enemies, in the end, joined him. How that efficiency uh, come about? Uh, Menelik cultivated talent. He appreciated merit. It's not who these people were born from, it was what these people were capable of doing. Can we imagine about the victory of Adwa without mentioning impermanent? It would be a great loss for us. What would be the cost of this distortion? The Battle of Adwa show that Africans have history. This is Amhara Media Corporation and you are watching our Tuesday update live from Bahardar, Ethiopia. Ministry of Peace underscored that the collaboration of all stakeholders, both local and international partner, is crucial to successfully accomplish the peace efforts being carried out in Ethiopia. Let's get more from the report. A high-level multi-stakeholder conference on peace building, national dialogue and togetherness in Ethiopia is held in Addis Ababa. The conference was organized by Inspired Ethiopian Youth Association in partnership with Initiative Concerned Generation Movement, Ministry of Peace and Ministry of Women and Social Affairs. Addressing the conference, State Minister of Peace Tayyid and Da said the government is working to ensure peace across the country and aspire peace as a human family regardless of their social, political and religious backgrounds. He stated that peace cannot be enforced but realized in dialogue, noting that togetherness can be ensured through understanding while understanding comes through dialogue. He underlined, ensuring peace demands collective and coordinated efforts with mutual understanding among stakeholders including international partners. The State Minister added, in this regard, individuals, families, communities, civil societies, different governmental institutions and international partners have their own role. Peace is a means for our life achievements. We have to make, nurture and protect our peace, both individually, locally and nationally, every time. But this can't be done alone, of course, with fragmented individual efforts. Rather, it demands collective and coordinated efforts with mutual understanding among stakeholders. Taye also mentioned about the importance of unity to a sustainable peace, stating that unity is not an option, particularly for nations like Ethiopia, it is a must. He said we cannot achieve unity without dialogue as it is best tool to create togetherness and social integration amongst the diverse sectors of the society. There are multiple uh, diversities and interests in Ethiopia, but we know that any diversity and interest can be protected and accommodated only under the umbrella of unity. Unity is not an option, 
particularly for nations like Ethiopia, it is a must. Ambassador of the Netherlands to Ethiopia, Henk Jan Bakker, said they are very pleased to see positive signs of the peace process in the northern Ethiopia, expressing his confidence that the efforts will continue. He also mentioned about the importance of inclusive dialogue to ensure sustainable peace, pointing out that the national dialogue which Ethiopia is about to conduct will contribute to ensure sustainable, legitimate and inclusive peace in Ethiopia. The ambassador stated that the successful conduct of Ethiopia's national dialogue demands a concerted collaboration and efforts of all stakeholders, affirming the continued support of the government of Netherlands. We support the international idea. We are one of the, one of the member countries of, uh, of that organization. And in that sense, I'm very happy to be here uh, also um, supporting this uh, meeting today. We hope that today all these people in the room will be uh, able to exchange ideas and experiences that could all contribute to the promotion of genuine, transparent and inclusive dialogue. Executive Director of Inspired Ethiopia Youth Association, Leuna Tamrat, said the conference aims at exploring the need for determined action to promote dialogue and understanding between generations in Ethiopia. The Executive Director also stressed the need for stakeholders to come together to address the root cause of conflicts in Ethiopia and work toward sustainable peace and reconciliation. We believe that young people have a crucial role to play in building peace and prosperous future for the country, Ethiopia. We are working toward creating a platform of dialogue between different nations, generations, citizens to promote dialogue between uh, young peoples and the elders. Acting Executive Secretary of United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, Antonio Pedro said, Ethiopia's Green Legacy Initiative is climate friendly and other African countries should learn from that. We have more Dov Mulyi for the report. The Executive Secretary said that Africa is working to restructure and transform its economy and wants to do it in the right way by promoting green options. What we are doing, therefore, discussing here is the ecosystem that uh, uh, links industrialization, uh, trade action and climate action, as well as uh, promoting uh, sustainable and inclusive development as part of the same continuum. But we want to do it in the right way by promoting green options. Secretary Antonio Pedro appreciated the Green Legacy Initiative that Ethiopia has been running and he added that all African governments and the people in the continent have to take a good lesson and experience from Ethiopia to focus on climate-friendly growth and development. So, and the same principle applies everywhere else in Ethiopia. The Green Legacy projects and all those things is, is really how to monetize those very good actions that our member states are already uh, are taking and to make sure that it is uh, uh, homegrown, that is organic, and of course, it's owned by all the people uh, sort of uh, that are part of and parcel of that project. So this is what we are we are we are sort of presenting here as options. We learn by doing. We learn by sharing uh, experiences. The peer learning uh, effort, and as as we also will provide better, uh, uh, um, um, we will elucidate. Uh, the steps that it takes, both in terms of improving the credibility of the carbon credit market. Pedro said that green development is not something that is easily achieved. It requires the integrated effort and movement of every stakeholder. Therefore, every African state should take the tremendous effort and commitment that Ethiopia has had for the past few years in promoting green legacy initiative. This is not an easy uh, sort of trajectory. It requires capacity building uh, because uh, the development of carbon credit uh, markets is not uh, something that is easy to do. And so we applaud certainly uh, the steps that um, Ethiopia is taking with a view to uh, uh, integrating its production systems with the rest of the opportunities in EGAD, in East, Eastern Africa in general and the rest of the world already. This is all we got for today. I am Fugrat Dizodo and you are watching our daily news. Goodbye and have a nice time.
Oh, 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 oh,